Annyeong! Welcome to Delightful! If I'm being honest, the Halloween doll usually consumes the fall season for me, which probably explains why I've never gotten around to making an autumnal character before. Well, better late than never, right? It's pretty darn wintry out there, but let's squeeze in a maple leaf fairy before the year is over! The Fairy Sisters were done on the Stockbox series, and Iriai was part of a collaboration. I never intended the fairies to be all together, or for there to be a seasonal theme, but they sort of worked out that way, huh? The sisters are sort of spring and summer vibes, Iriai is clearly winter, who will be the base doll for our autumn fairy? None other than Ever After High doll, Ashlyn Ella! I may be known for destroying and customizing dolls, but I'm often a big fan of the original character, despite the contrary. This one's no exception. I love Ashlyn, she's a beautiful doll, and I drew this quick sketch of a fall leaf fairy with Ashlyn in mind. She'll fit perfectly into the role. In fact, I love her little braid and gigantic bun so much that I'm going to keep it for our character. But I'll get rid of everything else. Clothes, earrings, and yep, even her face! I tucked the hair out of the way with the cloth and pins along the hairline for the upcoming modifications. I stabbed two holes into her ears with sewing pins. Ouch. Then insert a wire armature base. I repeat this on the other side and nudge them around till they look even. Looks good, so next comes the air dry clay. Mush it around the wire and dip your finger in a bit of water to coax the clay into a nice point. I'm a sucker for huge elf ears. None of those little pointy fellas, nah. If you're gonna go elf, you gotta go all out. She's also getting a tail, which I'm making the exact same way as Zura's tail. A coat hanger wire armature that simply tucks and sits inside the doll's body where I've drilled a hole. This tail is long and slender, sort of like a rat's tail. Throughout the video, I kept going back and forth on whether or not I liked it. Sometimes it looked cool, other times kind of creepy. <laughs> I was going for a tricky pixie or sprite type character, you know, not your typical fairy. Once those dry, you can pop off the tail and... Well, I was gonna pop off the ears too, but the armature wire was really stuck in there, so I guess I'll just keep them on. Alright, mix up acrylic paints to match the skin tone of our doll, and paint over the mods. Ooh, rat tail! To keep things interesting, I gave her extremities a gradient fill effect to a dark, rusty red color. Now our feisty pixie needs some stiletto nails. Clip off slivers of black construction paper, roughly in triangles. Round the base. Then, one at a time, glue them to the doll's microscopic nail beds. Tweezers are a huge help here. Reinforce the nails by layering glue up from the underside of the fingertips. And paint over them again on top while you're at it. Trim them down to a more reasonable length, and they're done! Paint over all the modifications with two layers of matte varnish. I've been very happy with this varnish by Holbein, if you can find it. Holbein? Wow, are we at the face-up stage already? You know the drill, folks. Get your respirator masks and head outside for two layers of Mr. Super Clear UV Matte Sealant to prep the face. Ooh, it's cold out there. Before I start, I take a photo of the blank doll and draw her face on digitally. I want a sassy, asymmetrical expression this time around, so it helped me to practice first. I don't do this every time, but it can help if you're on the fence about a face-up. Begin with a rusty blush over the eyes to match the gradients we gave her limbs. Then I dive right in with the line work, again using a rusty brown pencil. Even though the lines look wonky at first, I know they're in the right spot thanks to my mock-up I drew earlier. I thicken the lash line and sketch in some sideways glancing irises. Her right eye is more closed, so you can see more of the eyelid. Likewise, the more widely opened left eye is drawn with a smaller amount of eyelid on top. Seems like an obvious thing to point out, but if you miss this detail, it can look like the eyes are misshapen, as opposed to forming an expression. 
The eyebrows also play into this. The squinty eye has the eyebrow coming down, and the more open eye gets the raised eyebrow. I extended the naturally occurring line of her lips further out on one side for a wry smile. As always, you can find a list of supplies in the description of the video if you're ever curious about what I'm using. Once satisfied with the line work, you can move in with color. I place the basic colors of red and yellow in the iris and layer up highlights with a beige and cream pencil around her eyelids, as well as sharpen the shadows in black. After another spray of sealant to save my progress, if you will, I can continue building colors. Now is when I add her fluffy makeup influencer worthy eyelashes. Feel free to flip the doll upside down to handle the other eye with more ease. Some pigments just refuse to come off the pencil. This is the case with my yellow pencil. So I simply wet the tip and paint it on instead. Ooh, looks like they're glowing. This character is accidentally sharing several characteristics of the doll that came before her. <laughs> I started off with one beauty mark for aesthetic purposes, then I spotted a couple imperfections in the plastic and thought, hey, why not play those up? I love a freckled lass. One of my best friends has a freckle on her nose just like this, so it made me think of her. <laughs> to finish up the face, I simply darken the darks, lighten the lights, and dab on a small accent of gold paint to the inner corners of her eyelids and in the iris. Add a hair-thin white line around the pupil to make it pop. And of course, sparkly eye shines. Beautiful! Ever After High Dolls have very round basketball heads, and I find that harder to draw on. So I think this is one of my more successful face-ups on this line of dolls. Yay! Let's move on to her outfit next. Call it cliche or call it classic, I'm going to give her a full skirt of leaves. Fall colored leaves, of course. Look at this perfect fabric. I printed up a variety of leaf outlines and sizes to act as pattern pieces. Cut those out and trace them onto the back side of the fabric. I've made a selection from each color in the fabric. Then I paint glue around every single leaf outline, being generous with the application. Once that's dry, you can cut them out and the fabric won't unravel. It's a great way to make fabric leaves. Aren't they pretty? You could stop here, but you know me, I'm a bit extra, so let's get out the paints and detail these suckers. Referencing real images of leaves off screen, I dab oranges, reds, and green acrylic paints onto my leaves. I love including the veins and the little wart imperfections, it really sells it. I thought this one turned out particularly well. They're not all masterpieces though. The yellow base leaves turned out the best, but the orange fabric leaves quickly turned muddy and brown. I'll just put the duds in the bottom layer of her skirt, nobody has to see them. <laughs> My goodness, that was a lot of leaves! I didn't plan how many I'll need for this project, I just made a ton of them. Hopefully the number works out. Aren't they pretty? Her wings are also maple leaves, but with an added element. Inspired by the common buckeye butterfly, I tried to integrate elements of both the leaf and the insect's wing to create the perfect balance of both. I was winging this part, har har, so all things considered they turned out pretty good. Now I just have to paint this exact pattern three more times because I'm doing front and back. Now I wish I hadn't made it so complicated. <laughs> but boy, do they look good. It was worth it. How about we cut out the circles and replace them with a cream color? That will add more contrast to the wings and hopefully give them a sun catching effect. Yeah, it kind of works. Okay, the wings are looking pretty rad, but how are we going to stiffen them up? Even with the stiff glue, the fabric is too floppy. Well, how about we outline the entire thing with gold wire? 
tedious? Yes. It was a slow go bending the wire around each spike in the leaf, all while keeping the form as flat as possible. I made one per wing, then decided the best way to attach them would be to sew them on with a matching gold thread. I delicately whip stitched around the whole thing, but in the end the thread is somewhat visible. I didn't like that at first, but then my mom pointed out that it gives the wings a twinkling effect when they move. So that's not bad. The wings will attach to her back via magnet. I sewed a flat magnet into a tiny pocket, then stitched that to the wings in the center back. Whew, that's all the leaves and wings made up. Let's finish up the other elements of her clothing so we can put it all together. I sewed together a tiny corset made of three panels with darts at the bust. I made two of these, connected them at top and bottom, then turned the whole thing right side out for a lined corset. I stitch a couple vertical rows of decorative red lines to make it more interesting. Next I gathered up a long strip of brown tulle and whip stitched it to an elastic band. A whip stitch allows you to maintain the stretch, see? Close the loop, add a strip of ribbon to catch the crotch, and it's done. If you don't do the crotch ribbon, doll skirts tend to spring up to the armpits. <laughs> the outfit is finally coming together! Now to assemble the pièce de résistance, the leaf skirt. I start with a waist-length strip of ribbon. I go ahead and put the velcro in place and snug it up on the doll. Now it's just a matter of arranging and stitching on each leaf stem by stem. One or two stitches is enough to tack the leaves on, and it's easiest to do this directly on the doll, although removing the skirt for a better angle is always an option. I put the mediocre brown leaves on bottom, just like we talked about. <laughs> then started using up the better leaves on the second layer. Turns out I made just the right number of leaves. About three and a half layers is what I ended up sewing on. And of course, I put my favorite leaves right in front. What's fun about this skirt is you can kind of rearrange the outermost layer and get a different effect, depending on which leaf is overlapping the other. That's fun. The corset snaps on top, hiding the waistband and giving the illusion that it's one connected dress. This was the point where I planned on sewing the other magnet into her clothes, where the wings would attach, but her corset comes down too low in the back, so what do? Looks like we'll have to go the plastic surgery route and implant the magnet instead. Ah! Okay. <laughs> yep. Don't know about the doll. Just another day in the delightful factory. Yep. Slope the edges inward so the magnet has a place to sit. And glue it in place. I used hot glue this time. I know, it should have been epoxy. I got lazy. As for shoes, I think I'm going to rob these totally bomb sandals from another Ever After High doll. They've got pink accents at the moment, but a little repainting will help them match our character. In fact, the whole character needs some touching up. She's at that stage where she's almost done, but needs the finishing touches to really pull the whole thing together. With the magic of editing, we can skip forward a bit and BAM! She's done! I repainted the shoes to have maroon and gold accents, painted gold tips around several of her skirt leaves so that they match her wings better, switched her nails from black to gold, found and repainted another cool doll accessory I already had around her neck and shoulders, and added some quirky wooden orbs to her hair. Now she feels finished! When the leaves are changing hues and the air turns crisp and nippy, keep an eye out for Maple, the fall fairy. How do you think Maple turned out? I didn't consider that her hands would become visually lost against the background of her own outfit and wings, 
The gradient looked cool by itself, but her hands just disappear, so it wasn't a good idea after all, I guess. Thank you so much for watching! I know some of you were hoping for a holiday doll, which I wasn't able to get to this year. But may I suggest Ear Eye's video from last year? I know the boy dolls are never as popular as the girl dolls, but it's a really good video that deserves more love. My best ever fairy wing tutorial is in his video, so please go watch it. <laughs> Happy holidays, everyone! Stay artsy! Annyeong!